Hello everyone. Today I want to show you the very basics of getting started with your micro bit and how we can do some coding on it. So the first thing that I have done already is I've used the USB cable to plug the micro bit into my computer. And then you should see if I come along here and press this button that looks like a folder on the bottom of my computer, it can be slightly different on different computers. But what we're looking for is the my computer section of the computer. So I feel like if I click on here, you should see in a moment, it's going to come up with this PC, or sometimes it's called my computer. And if I come over to the left here, hopefully everybody can see there's something called micro bit. So that's just saying that it's plugged into your computer, your computer's recognized it, and it's an external hard drive. So it's effectively the same as plugging in a USB stick or something like that. So that one's all there. Uh, we can click on it and just see what's inside. At the moment, there's just a few things that might be useful there. But we're going to leave those for the moment, and we're going to open up a web browser. So we're using Google Chrome. You can use Internet Explorer. You can use Firefox. Any web browser will work. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to makecode.microbit.org. There are actually four different options for different coding languages that we can use uh, that the microbit will accept. We could use JavaScript, Blockly, which is a block editor, touch develop or python. Uh, JavaScript and Python are slightly more complicated so we're going to be using the block editor for now which is a fairly simple way of coding so that we can create codes and then download them onto our micro bit. So when we come to this website the first thing we can do is click new project. So that just starts us a new project up here. And that one's just going to load up. Perfect. And then you can see the screen looks like this. So on the left hand side we have kind of a practice micro bit. So anything that you code over here, you can test out before downloading it on this pretend micro bit. So at the moment, we haven't coded anything. So if I press A, nothing happens. If I press B, nothing happens. If I kind of restart it, nothing happens. Uh, I can try and kind of move it and nothing happens at all. So if I click on this one, I can also make it go full screen. Okay, so there's all sorts of options down here, we can slow it down, but at the moment we haven't programmed anything. Now every time you open this up, you'll start with two blocks. So we've got on start and forever. If we want to get rid of these, you just have to click on it and drag it over here and it removes it. Sometimes we will need them, sometimes we won't need them. Over here we also have all sorts of different commands. So we're normally going to be starting with either a basic command like this or an input command like this. So these say things like on button A pressed or on shake or on pin P0 pressed. What this basically means is if I take one of these and drag it over here, I can make something happen when button A is pressed. So we'll start with something nice and simple. If I go to my basic ones and I could say show string. So I'm just going to click and drag this one to on start. So at the moment, on start, so that means when the micro bit starts up, I'd like it to show the string hello. You'll notice over here, the simulator is showing hello as well. So when I turn the micro bit on, what I want to happen is for hello to go across the screen. And then let's say on button A pressed, I would like to, I'd like to show an icon. So if I take this one here and I drag that one to there, like that, I can choose which icon I want to show. So I might choose that I'd like to have this one here, just like that. So now we can test over here. It starts by saying hello, and then if I press button A, it should show us my icon, which is the one that I selected over there. We can do something similar with button B. So I can just take this on, put it here, put on button B pressed, and then I can choose something to happen. So I can go on to my basic, and maybe when button B is pressed, I'd like to have, we'll leave it with a heart shape. So we should see, if we press button B over here, it's just doing its hello at the moment. Press button B and we get the heart. Perfect. So we've managed to do some very simple coding just to start us off. So hopefully now our micro bit will say hello when we turn it on. It will show this sad, angry face when we press the button A and it will show a heart when we press button B. So all that's left now is to transfer it from just being a computer code to being something onto our actual micro bit. So to do that, we just press download, or just before I do that, I'm going to give it a name. So I'll just put starter project for this name, just like that. So it's got a name. And then I'm going to click download, perfect. So what I've done is I've created in my documents 
a folder called microbit projects. We're just going to pop it in there. So it's just called microbit starter project. And I'm going to save that one. Okay, perfect. So now I can go back to my computer over here. And what we need to do is to find where we've put it. So if I go to my documents, it was in microbits project. This is where it is. So that's my microbit starter project. That's what I called it. And it's a dot hex file. So that's just the type of file that it is. Now, all I need to do, there's a few ways I can do this. I could either right click and copy and then go into the micro bit and I could right click and paste. That's one way of getting it on there. And then it's going to move it. I'll show you another way once this one's gone over. We just have to wait for this to complete. The micro bit will flash some lights while this is happening as well. So you know it's going on properly. Perfect. That's one way of doing it. Or another way of doing it, if I just open this one back up again, a more simple way is we can actually just go into our documents, find that project again, click on it, and drag it over. And that's just another way. So it's just copying it over again. Brilliant. Now this will overwrite any project that's on there. So it doesn't delete it because it's still saved on our computer, but we can obviously only have one project on the micro bit at a time, or else if you've coded it before for button A to do something different, and now you've coded it again for button A to do something new, uh, it's not going to know quite what to do. So every time you put a new project onto your micro bit, that will be the project that it does. So what I'd like you to do now is maybe have a little bit of a try with that one. Follow the instructions for our project number one, Put them onto your micro bit and see if you can do that.